Have you ever wondered why the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra retails for about $1,000 while the Realme GT with the same processor and the same 120Hz AMOLED screen retails for $460? That's less than half the price. Today I'm going to show you how Android phone manufacturers cut corners to sell phones cheaply without many people who use these phones knowing what they are cutting off. Is that really a bad thing? <laughs> well, it's not a straight yes or no answer as I'll explain shortly in the video. Uh, but today, we'll focus on an act of cutting corners that proves costly for Android users, especially when your phone is broken or your touch screen stops working. The USB Alt mode. A rich Android feature that should be on all Android phones, but it is not. And most of these OEM that sells phones cheaper don't want you to know. But if you want to know about it, come with me. Let's go check it out. Hey, welcome back again to Smart Depot. And before we dive into the USB alt mode, now I keep asking this question, how do Android OEM keep cutting corners and cell phone cheap and most people don't even know what's going on in the background? Well, there is a straightforward answer to this one and it is the Android mid-range segment. And in mid-range segment, I mean Android phone that could cost from around uh, $200 to or $500. As the Android mid-range section becomes robust and better and better over the past three years, more premium features are coming to the mid-range section like um, top-of-the-end processors, you're getting fast charger, NFC, uh, bigger batteries, 120 hertz refresh rate, AMOLED, and all that is coming to the mid-range. In fact, you don't need a thousand dollars right now to buy a good Android phone. If you have up to $400 to $500, you can still get yourself an Android phone that does almost everything you want to do on your phone on a daily basis. Wireless charging, IP certification for dust and water resistance, and probably optical image stabilization are just a few things that are left for the $1,000 plus or those premium Android flagship devices. And the truth is that over 90% of Android users can use their phone without uh, IP certification and wireless charging. Which means that Android OEM will, can keep cutting corners, selling phones cheaply, and still keeping the majority of the buyers happy. You may already know that Android OEMs reduce premium glass back down to cheap plastic, replace aluminum phone chassis with plastic, and use a two-year-old processor in their mid-range phone. However, they cut a corner that you probably haven't heard about yet. Before this gets very intense, a sub to the channel will be very satisfying to say the least. So why not click on that subscribe button right now and then like and share this video so that you know other people can get to know about this. While Android OEMs can cram in a lot of hardwares uh, into the mid-range phones, these hardwares are poorly utilized. Top-end processors with no cooling or very poor cooling system, they put in top-end camera sensors with no image stabilization. I can go on and on and on about underutilized hardware that is in Android mid-range phones. It gets even worse when it Talk about software optimization in these Android mid-range phones or even flagship killers. And if you think that is bad, fasten your seatbelt because we are about to take off. The USB Alt mode exposes how Android OEM cut deep corners uh, to the detriment growth and the robustness of Android ecosystem. So to the main matter, what is USB Alt mode? USB Alt Mode is a functional extension of USB Type-C which enables USB connections to carry non-USB signals. Alt Modes are optional capabilities that are unique to the USB Type-C connector or port that allow technologies like DisplayPort, Thunderbolt, Reverse Charging, transmitted via USB-C. 
The USB Alt mode allows your Android phone to deliver up to 4K video at 60 FPS from your USB C port. You know, charge other device, receive digital sounds, or multiple joystick connection all from your USB port. And let's stick to USB C display port function here because several Android flagship devices already have this function. So, how do Android phone manufacturers avoid adding a display port to their phone's USB C? The easiest way Android OEM caught this corner is simple. Continue to use USB C version 2.0 instead of version 3.1 and beyond. USB Alt mode display port requires USB-C version 3.1 and above. Therefore, Android OEMs stick with USB-C version 2.0 and boom, no need to talk about the display port. So let's take a little quiz. Is your current smartphone using USB-C version 2.0, 3.0, 3.1 .1, or 3.2? Now, most people won't even know <laughs> which one they're using, but you know, just check that out. Now, let me make it practical. The Realme GT2 Pro and the OnePlus 10 Pro are similar devices or you can call them a clone of each other as they come from the same parent company and share the same spec in everything. The OnePlus 10 Pro costs 18% higher than the Realme GT2 Pro and you want to know how Realme cut the corner to reduce that price chip? Okay, let me show you this. The Realme GT2 Pro uh, uses USB-C version 2.0 while the OnePlus 10 Pro uses USB Type-C version 3.1 with a display port function. So what's my point? There will be no need for me to make series of video on how to access or use your phone with a broken or dead screen if the USB-C is also a display port. It could have been the same way you plug in external monitor to your laptop, PC or Mac when the internal screen is bad or not good enough. USB Alt Mode was released in 2014 and 8 years later in 2022, it is not available in any Android mid-range phone. Man, that's sad. Sadly, Google was the first Android OEM that failed to implement the USB Alt Mode display port when Pixel 2 was launched with USB-C version 3.1 in 2017. Uh, maybe Google trying to sell more Chromecast devices contributed to that. <laughs> Who knows, today Chromecast is probably half dead <laughs> and Google still disable USB-C display port for recent Pixel phones. In 2018, Samsung implemented the USB Alt Mode display with the debut of the Samsung Galaxy S8 series. However, uh, Samsung had to add their own interest to the display port, launched Samsung Desk, and sold a composite product, the Dex Dock, of over $100 if you really want to enjoy the display port features in all its glory. Samsung Dex didn't turn out to be successful either and my $5 knockoff adapter works fine uh, for USB-C to HDMI display and enables Samsung Dex if you connect a charger to it. I'll put a link in the description for this adapter. You may want to have it because it's a very, very useful one. It's also available for iPhones starting from iPhone you know, 6S and above. There is no way I will end this video without mentioning Xiaomi. For four years after Samsung started using the USB-C uh, version 3.1 and display port in its flagship phone, Xiaomi's 2022 flagship Mi 12 Pro still stuck with USB version 2.0. Uh, USB Alt mode <laughs> cannot be implemented with the USB uh, 2.0. So if you have a Xiaomi 12 Pro or even 11 Ultra, don't bother checking. Xiaomi has migrated into the Android top tier of premium phone but somehow still cuts corners. The Mi 11 Ultra that retailed for $1,100 for the base configuration, a true flagship Android phone from Xiaomi. However, corners were still caught because the Mi 11 Ultra had a USB-C version 2.0 without the display port function of the USB Alt mode. How do you sell a phone over a thousand dollars with a USB-C version 
Anyway, I'll put a list of Android devices that support USB-C display port in the video description. Uh, do check it out before thinking of buying your next phone. I just feel that Android OEM should stop this madness of upping the spec each year without maximizing the available hardware features in improving software experience. So, focusing on hardware software optimization would do the Android ecosystem a whole world of good. I really recommend Samsung for giving 4 years of Android OS upgrade from S22 series and I want Google and other Android OEMs to do likewise for all Android phones. Okay, that's about that. Uh, let me know what you think in the comment section. Do you think that Android OEMs should focus more on software optimization and even increasing the utility of the hardwares that this phone carry? Uh, let me hear from you. And if you watched up to this point, that means you like this video, you like the channel. Why not click on that subscribe button, click on it, click on it, click on it, click on it right now, and then like and share. And until I see you in the next video, peace. Yeah.